All right, folks, welcome to episode, what is this, episode seven. And let me bring Mike on board. There he is. Howdy. Good morning. Happy New Year. Close to it. Do you have to say it? Can you you say Happy New Year's Eve, I guess, is probably a more accurate way of saying it, huh? Happy New Year's Eve morning? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not morning everywhere. That's true. In fact, let's see, when, what's, is it New Year's? Let's see, is there a UTC plus three somewhere? Yeah, it must be. So it must be uh, getting pretty close to New Year's for some folks. So welcome to uh, our episode. We're, we're uh, definitely only going to spend a couple hours today as the last pairing stream of 2023. So yesterday, uh, we started, what did we do? We, I know we had, um, we did some refactoring. We talked about some architecture stuff. Uh, we talked about, yeah, like deciding whether to start off with having song searcher hold the, uh, Right. Yes, we were we were discussing whether whether it was uh, we were going to push all the searching to the database or or leave it as basically one big read model that's in memory. And I'm glad we, I'm glad we chose uh, the the path we did, which is let's let's try try it out in memory because uh, yeah. that I think that worked out more straight at least a bit more straightforward than I thought it uh, thought it would be. Mm. Hey, Cleach and Dota Attitude, welcome. Hi. I was checking. It. <clears throat> uh, somebody, somebody uh, last night did it. Did a caffeinate. Usually, I disable the the Twitch where you can do reward requests. Usually, I replace. I, I turn off the caffeinate at night, but I forgot to do that. But uh, I'm going to caffeinate right now. Hardy Muhammad. Welcome. Welcome. So, should I share your screen? All righty. Sounds good. There we go. Should we open Jira? Let's open Jira and let's see where we're at. <laughs> I will never tire of that joke. No. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where were we? We were here. Right. So we were doing the add a song that doesn't exist to the database. Um, is that done? Um, we had we had the zero, we had the one, we had the many. Let's go look at the test. Was it? Uh, we don't need these. It was the song service test. Yes. Hey, Abusif, welcome. No songs added. One song added. Multiple uh -huh. songs are found by their theme. Now, but we've only added. What about if we have, well, I guess that would be on, you know, closer to the, I was thinking about what you're, if we have multiple I can tell things. you, you're jumping things in, that you're not actually saying. So right. uh, yeah, yeah. why, don't, why that, don't you tell folks what you're thinking? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. I was totally, I actually recognized that I was doing that jumping parsing thing. Yeah. Um, so far we've done it only with one theme. Right. So we don't have multiple themes in the database and then requesting right. one theme. And we actually haven't even done what happens if you request two themes, which is actually a bit of a um, product owner decision as to what they want to have right. happen. Right. Um, <clears throat> I would consider that a, a an unimplemented feature as of this point. But yeah. but what I think you you were going to ask a question, then you answer you partially answered it. Like, do we need to test the multiple themes at this level? Right. And the answer is no. We test that closer to the song searcher. Right. So, and this is really this is really important because uh, a really important concept that I that that um, is why I like the layering is here at this level. And maybe I'll bring up the hexagon diagram. Um, at this level, 
what we're testing when we're testing against the application layer, which is what we're doing with the song service, saying, hey, uh, find songs from by this theme. Um, what we're testing is, does it connect to the domain? Does it talk to the actual song searcher object underneath? And does it does it then do we create a new one that then has the, the right stuff in it? But um, there's no reason to to basically fully test everything from the application layer, right? We've got lots of smaller smaller tests directly against the domain. So there's no need for us to 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 do the comprehensive testing at this layer. So then I would say as a devil's advocate. Um, did we need all three tests at this layer? No, we could have gotten away with, uh, with go probably just gone to, to many. Um, but we did grow code based but, on this approach. Yeah. This and, test. and so, so it's, you know, do we still need those? Maybe not. Right. And so I think that's, that's even a more interesting question is mm -hmm. do we now need all three of those since we've tested the connection, um, do we actually need the other two tests? Uh, and I might argue we can delete them. Yeah. And I was, oh, let me get rid of my screen yard. <laughs> Infinity stone screen. Yes. Um, yeah, I actually like that idea. Um, in some ways, I almost want to, like, we know that service level tests are checking to make sure that we're talking to the domain right and we know that is there we a, do. but i guess i'm wondering is there a way to by eliminating those two that's a breadcrumb in a way to somebody else looking at the code like why are they don't why didn't they test zero and one um but i guess it's not really yeah, and, and so, I'm thinking of like self-documenting perspective. Right, right. Oh, yeah, um, documentation. And so it's it's a the right. It's engineering, so they're trade-offs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if we leave them, how much does it hurt? Various aspects of what we do, runtime of running tests, it's irrelevant because these tests run Fast. five tests or 10 tests there's no difference 50 tests or 100 tests there's no difference for, for the io free tests so there's never a concern that oh it's going to add time to running tests if it does that's a separate issue but um oh i think i'm i phrased but you're right in terms correctly. of of the of the value of the tests there for people well actually like, i was yeah. going a different route actually sorry oh, okay i think you were thinking that I was talking about keeping these tests, I still think we should get rid of them. No, but... I'm saying the the, the trade-off of 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 keeping them is there are multiple aspects where there's there's trade-offs. So keeping them doesn't hurt runtime, but does it right. hurt other aspects? Like why are you testing at this level? You just need to test as a connection. Um, Another perhaps more important thing, which is probably what more folks I see talk about is, well, what if you don't return a list of song anymore? What if you return some other type of object? Then you get three tests to change. Right. Then you, now you've got tests at two levels to change. Right. So there's 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 these link tests that are, if they're testing the same thing um, and you, you're it would not surprise me that uh, various search things are going to return something other than a list uh, right. or, or a list of songs, especially with multiple themes and with certain ranking, there might be some larger object that gets returned or a different object. <clears throat> um, or if it just changes in, in some way, we, right, for let's say, for example, uh, I can't, I can't think of anything. I mean, just, but. Yeah, like a different kind of collection class has to come back for some. Yeah, or just a, a or just different behavior. Yeah. Um, so that's something that's something that this is why you you want to reduce the number of, of tests that are basically testing the same thing at different levels. Yeah, I I think we should get rid of them. Yeah. The zero and one. Yep. yep. The uh, so Dada asks oh. how you're going to enter your songs and themes into the database through the UI, um, and a spreadsheet. Well, that's another story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at least what we're working on right now is a, is a single song entry from the UI. 
and then we'll. Uh, add song seems like the wrong method at the service layer. Maybe add songs to theme or add theme. Um, no, the the at least the way I understand what we're being asked to do is there's going to be a form that's going to have the song and part of that form will have its theme. So it's not, uh, there may be other reasons to have, there may be other UIs where it's like, hey, enter a whole bunch of songs for this theme. Then that might be useful. Uh, but then that would be a different service layer use case uh, command. And then that name would be a good name. Add songs right. to theme. Yeah. And then so it may the be that that we create themes and add the songs to that theme. And then that theme gets added to to the, to the database. Um, but all those are are predictions of things that we don't know, have enough information about. Um, so what I was going to say, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete these because I think I'm in agreement. Are you yep. good with that? Yeah. Actually, I'm going to do Actually, can you do it from the void? I'm curious. No, it needs to be on. It has to be, yeah, it has to be on the name. Yeah. So the... the um, Less stated or was in my brain, but I probably didn't say correctly. <laughs> Part of, of this was actually I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna type it as a comment and then uh, then that'll drive the conversation. Um, Tess. Now correct me if I'm wrong. Um, connection, I don't like the word, but I'm gonna use it for now connection to domain um, hexagon. In other words, mm -hmm. saying what this test is doing, right? Like we just had the conversation, yeah, we don't need one and two. Right. Because we're, and I, it, connection is not the right word. You used a different terminology, which I thought. Uh, I use wiring. Wiring, yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, you could also use dependency, but that's that, that has other problems with it. So I use wiring. Or wired, yeah. So, and this is, I guess, a little bit of a. It's like we know that that's what it means by a service test. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where my head was going. I didn't really go that mm -hmm. deep in it, but like, would um, would it be more self-documenting to call this? Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna pick one: song service wiring test. Or is that too specific? Because we might have more things in here that are more than just about wiring. So this specific test is more about is is this it's not just wiring. Yeah. True. So the um, the test that did nothing that that could have been just pure wiring because you're never going to find anything with when the song database is empty. Right. But here, because of the song searcher. Uh, the song searcher structure, the service is actually orchestrating song searchers. So it's not mm -hmm. just forwarding a, and delegating a request, which is what we started with 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 the with the, the, the zero zero case is just did did it delegate the method call? Um, but now the the application layer is doing work as part of this test, right? Application layer and service layer are synonymous? Yes. OK. Yeah, sometimes I'll say application service layer. Mm. Um, but it's it's the application layer. But even that, like, uh, and I'll also refer to it as use case layer, because that's basically where we talk about what do you want to do? Um, yeah. Things I want to do are add songs and search songs by theme. Those are those are in a sense high level task that the that the user wants to do. Got it. In that case, I rescind my suggestion. I think I'm I'm good with it. So uh Indefunctor Zero uh suggests removing added, but actually what we're testing here specifically explicitly is is that it's that at that multiple added songs are found by their theme. 
that is that is the entire purpose of what the application layer is doing is it's it's making sure that songs get added. And that's an important thing is when we look at this test and we say, what is actually being tested? What behavior are we testing? Um, what we're testing is the middle part, right? The, you know, whether it's arrange act assert, which I don't like, um, or uh, set up execute and assert, which is my preference. What we're executing, the commands we're executing, that's what we're testing. I'm not going to leave these in. Yeah. Oh, what was it there when you said? Uh, assert. Assert. So oh, it's okay. SEA, which is nice. Oh, that's nice. See, yeah. yeah. The problem I have with, with Arrange Act Assert is people get the order confused. Yep. Um, there's also given when then, but I feel like that is uh, in, in, almost too abstract. <laughs> um, so I, I, I adopted, uh, Mazzaro actually calls it set up, uh, execute, verify. Um, but I like the cert because it's, it's very specific to what you're going to be doing, which is writing a cert statement. Yeah. Yeah. Verify has, has some, uh, other meanings that, that I didn't want. So yeah, I thought the cert was very straightforward. Um, so yeah. Uh, should we do a commit just to yeah re register that? One thing I'm trying to do more in in my own work is is commit more often. Um, yeah, because I'm I'm very bad at that. Is that correct spelling? I needed. I guess it likes it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shift escape. OK. Uh, we haven't run tests today, so let's run everything. Yep. <clears throat> so have you, have you ever tried uh, TCR? No. It's on my to-do list, but I haven't tried it. Um, I know we did it once in an ensemble. Were you there for that? You might have been there. Maybe at almost every ensemble. <laughs> um, that was when we used. Uh, so there's a plugin for TCR for IntelliJ, and it would then pop up um, every time something passed. It would pop up, do a commit, and you would make a choice from that. Uh, I have. I want to try it again because the way that I do something not quite similar, but um, is I tend to write, and we've seen this on, on stream here, is I tend to write the the larger tests and then get it, go from a, one red to a different red, perhaps even to a different red, where each one you you can predict exactly how it's gonna fail, uh, and then you get to green. Whereas uh, with TCR, you would do it, you you customize those assertions to each, each little step. So I already kind of do that idea of really taking these tiny steps, um, but, uh, I just have to, I, I, I'd like to try yeah. it again. <clears throat> One thing I wanted to say about the um, TCR was um, I was lucky enough to have uh, a meal with uh, Kent Beck mm. like, around when he was doing TCR. Mm. It wasn't me, it was like a larger group, right? But right. Um, And he was saying, talking about TCR, and he's like, yeah, when somebody proposed this idea to me, in other words, he didn't think of it, right? Somebody right. else did. He's like, I thought this was a horrible idea. Right. And he's like, I gotta try it. Right. <laughs> and um, and so that was really refreshing to see that approach to to work and to life. Mm -hmm. Um, and it kind of made me go, Oh yeah, I should be doing more of that. Like, and not just give it a quick, yep, I was right, that doesn't work. Right. But like right. really um let go of expectations and give it a role seriously. Yeah. Yeah. and find out what you can extract from it that's a value or if all of it's a value right yeah so yeah. so it's cool so i think uh so Dota, as you mentioned did not pr produce very good code in the end uh hard to focus on the big picture i can see getting sort of caught up in 
constantly having to to redo the code if if the test fails. The idea of TCR for those who don't know is test and commit or revert. So you write a test that fails. Your next action has to be where it passes, otherwise the code gets reverted. Um, and either you do that through a, uh, a plugin that does it for you, or you do it manually. Um, but I can see how you it, it can, if you're just starting out with it, you could get wrapped up in, in, in the lower level stuff. Um, I would think that, yeah, so, you, so, you're, so you're focused on this. Uh, and so I think that that's really interesting because whenever you learn a new skill, you're going to be, uh, and I posted this article in Discord about how people learn. It's like novices are focused on executing the instructions, the rules, and applying the rules. And and so you're, you, it almost feels like you have blinders on because you're focused on just let me do this right. Uh, and so you have to get to you'd have to get to the point, and this is where I think folks don't give whatever they're trying out a chance um, because they don't get past that stage. And so it's like, oh, this doesn't work because I can't think higher level. Um, well, you can't think higher level because you're still focused on learning the skill. And I think if you really, really wanted to give it a try, you'd have to do it enough so you say, now I can do it without having to think about the steps and thinking about uh, getting getting the code to, to not be erased. Um, and you start get more fluent and then you'd probably start be able to, to think higher level. Or it may be that you practice it a lot and you never get to that level and then you say, okay, this isn't, this isn't gonna work. So that's interesting. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, next step. Oh, All right. Actually... Uh, so I think, Jira 27 is, is closed. That's really more of a note than a task. Yeah. What the hell? I don't care. It's not like. Um, <laughs> so, what we don't have is saving in any kind of. Well, in a sense, and this came up yesterday, uh, in a sense, right now, our song search, our not song searcher, our um service because it has the reference to the song searcher uh the song searcher is basically a repository right and so what do we do we want so looking, to can you toss up the hexagon while we talk about this yeah i think that will it certainly helped me but i imagine it might help people who are thinking or what i mean watching so repository would be over in the persistence right. on the right hand side yeah and so the and application layer would talk to the port right. for the persistence right and it's um it's really right now, it's basically, can we can we hold the song searcher state between server restarts? Because right, right now, as right long as the server is running, it, we, we keep adding songs, it'll 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 find yeah. them. Um, but at some point we want to restart the server. Uh, and or it may be restarted for us. <laughs> uh, but certainly every one? every deploy that, that you do is gonna they're gonna restart it. So so does that mean our the song searcher should be moved to adapter out? Mm, no, if we are, if, we well, if, we, if we're going the direction from uh, the design direction that the song searcher is the domain uh, right. and it's in memory, um, then it stays where it is. Uh, but the application layer layer needs to to load and save it. Right. Okay. So, so load and save would that be our next chunk of work? Yeah. So, so get to a vertical slice where we're getting right, everything. Right. Um, and so what's interesting is the yeah I, that's going to be interesting because typically. 
your load and save operations are are basically the the unit of work kind of thing right. in in your in your application layer so you do a load execute behavior and then do a save uh here our load is happening when the server starts and then the saves are happening uh basically after we modify the in a sense create the new song searcher um so this will be interesting yeah so i think i think persistence is next uh and the way we would do that um normally i would create sort of the repository port right off the bat because it's it would be fairly typical uh here i'm not sure what that's going to look like what are we what are we so what's the unit of of stuff that we're loading from the repository, I guess, is our is our question. So if we're if the stream search is going to be reloaded every time there's a song add. Oh, you got a picture. Yeah, there's a bit more of a precise picture of the repository. So the application layer talks to to the port, which basically eventually is the repository adapter, and say, load stuff. Presumably, it's it's basically presumably right not presumably right now it would I think be just songs. Without, just a big pile of songs. A just song. a big list a big list of songs. Because right and now then, a song contains. And then we instantiate the song searcher from that. Right. So, and so again, this goes back to the idea of our song searcher is the aggregate. Songs are entities, but song searcher is our aggregate. Right. Uh, and how to, and, and which doesn't match our original uh, event storming. Um, right. That's fine. Uh, we may eventually get there, but, um, but yeah, so, so our, uh, I'm going to bring your code back. So if we go, uh, Expand, expand the window for Song Searcher. You're in it right now. And so if we look at this, we see there's an add method. And therefore, it's in a sense the aggregate, although it's not really because we're not, the unit of what we're saving is actually not. So, so I, I retract my statement. Song Searcher is not an aggregate because we don't save it. It is hmm. really some, uh, I'm not sure what, it it's just a service. Um, but anyway, I don't think we, we need to discuss much. I think we can just start uh, writing tests. And we're still going to write tests against the, um, the service layer. Um, Sorry, you're in the song searcher class. I meant to, to for you to show the song service class. Oh, sorry. This one. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're not loading and saving and doing anything. We are adding songs, but we're adding songs. We're not adding song searchers. And we're not reading and writing the song searcher. Um, we're going to recreate that each time. Well, I mean. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want to. I don't. It'd be very easy to, to sort of talk for a while about yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. whether song searcher is an aggregate or not. I think we we have enough information to write our our next test. Yeah. Um, which is about persistence. So do you want to add a Jira for persistence? Yeah, let's. I think you had one. Uh, I think I might have had it in, down here. Yeah, yeah. Like one of these. Yeah. So I'd say it's. Um, you don't need this one, right? That one's. Well, I think there's two steps. Uh, there's uh, create in-memory repository and then create database uh, specific uh, adapter. We don't need to write Jira. We have Jira. We just add stuff to a, to the Jira. It's easy, easy peasy. Uh, what was it again? Create database. Uh, repository adapter. Move this up to our yeah. 
Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff we've talked about in terms of third party stuff, but right now we're focused just on what our app needs. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. I was looking at the uh, chat. Um, right. So, song service test. Is that right? Where we're going to That would be correct. Yes. So, how how do we write this? What is our test going to be? So I think that the, it comes back to when do we load songs? Right. Are we going to load them every time a song is added? Because at that point we would say we have we've added some songs. Now we need to shove them out to persistence so we don't forget about them if the server dies now. Um, and then we have to. Well, we could probably continue to use, use what we have, which is create a new song searcher with the new song appended to it um, and write it out to the database. Uh, so it's sort of a, a lower level question of, do we want to read our rights or do we want to basically write it Again, it's very cache like. It's it's basically uh, uh, cache cache ahead. I forget the, the technical term, but it's basically we'd be writing to our cache and then writing to the database. And certainly, something could happen in between writing to the cache and writing to the database, where now we have stuff in memory that's no that's that never got written to the database. But I think we can put that concern aside um, and focus on uh, when do the songs get loaded. I think they get loaded when we create the song service, when the, in a sense, the song service is started. So what do you, what do you think? Because if we look at uh, the startup class, Whoops. Right. So when it creates the song searcher, that's that's where we really need it to get loaded. Right. So um yeah, so I think I think we give the repository wait a second. Yeah. Sorry. If we already loaded it with these two songs, is this test actually so this is the startup class, so it's not used by anything except the real application. Ah, okay. Right, right, right. Because it's part of the Spring world, and we're not yeah. where unit tests are not Spring. Yep, yeah. never mind. And whether we write a test for this, I don't know. I feel like it's it's obvious um, because once 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 we get the repository and, and inject the repository into the song searches constructor, uh, then uh, then we'll swap out the the beam here for that right okay so what will we name this test um save songs loaded on 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 uh startup Uh, past tense for save. Okay. Saved. Right. Got it. So uh, what we need is. Should we sketch this one out in comments? Or do you think we can do it without? Uh, we can do that. So the first step is going to be. Um, Create a song repository. And then uh, create the service passing in the song repository. Uh, 
uh, and I think st a step in between those two uh, is add songs to song repository, add songs directly to song repository. And then our assertion is we should find that so those directly added songs via the song service search by theme. Yeah. Does that make sense? I think so. I just want to finish typing it, then I'll yeah. uh, via the song searcher theme. Is that what you said? The search by theme method, basically. Search, yeah, yeah. You're going to say a fan by the song search, you will know exactly what. Yeah. Mean by that. Okay, create repository. Um, sorry, not song searcher, song service. Because we're we're not directly talking to the. Right. That's got to be a little confusing. I, I keep confusing those two because they both start with. They're both. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> song service and song searcher. So, yeah. Hmm. We may have to rename just for yeah, that. We'll, avoid we'll... that confusion. Cognitive. Well, friction. song service was was always kind of temporary anyway. Uh, so hopefully we can come up with a better name for that. So let's see. Create song repository. Add songs directly to the repository. Create a service passing in the song repository, and then assert that those directly added songs can be found via the song service. That seems relatively straightforward. Yeah. Um, and so here's where we could write all the code we need. Um, creating the song repository code on the fly, or which is a very outside in way of doing it. Or we could say, we know what the song repository is going to look like and basically test that, um, test drive that. I don't think the repository is going to be that complicated, so I don't feel the need to sort of inside out test that. Yeah. Works for me. All right. Uh, so let's create a song repository. Now. This one is going to want to know where. Should I name it and then? Yeah. You can even new it up if you want. Really want to do that? Uh, well, the one with not with the postfix, you'd have to manually yeah. do it. So you could just create it right, right now. Yeah. And this will be a class, yes. And yep. Uh, and not application this, layer, right? Or uh, the... it is application layer, but uh, it's actually going to be. This will be our port. So let's put it in a sub package called dot uh, called port. Well, so don't me... use it. Don't do it by the directory. Do it by the package name up above. Ah. Yeah. Just straight port? Yep. OK. Hey there, Albatross. Welcome. Howdy. All right, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. um, Now we could do the same thing here is uh, we could do it via a constructor. Um, the adding of the songs? What yeah, is the, it? basically the pre-populating of the songs in the repository we could do via a constructor. Uh, Will that be a frequently used construct or? For tests it would. So it would be very much a, a test-oriented method. Gotcha. So like a varg kind of thing? Yeah. Or we could just do um, an add method 
which we would need anyway. Right. And so. And the ad method would be one song at a time, continuing that pattern? Yes. Yes. Like thus? Uh, I don't think we need the word song there because it'll be obvious that that's oh. what we're adding because that's the name of the repository. Good point. As well as the thing we'll be adding. So now, um, this yeah, way you're, well, you're heading? yeah so, sort of. Uh, for now, yes. There's other stuff we could do, but I'm trying not to take too big of a step because we're mm. already going to okay. be taking a, a big of a step. Um, yeah, you can just copy stuff from the previous uh, test. I was thinking of something different. Uh, let's see okay. if I have it handle just to get some variety for uh, <laughs> for ourselves and for uh, I wish I had one on waves because we've had a lot of big waves hitting California right now. Oh yeah, but I don't. So um, we'll do okay. Ryan Eno song. I don't know if you know it. Uh, I'm not good with titles, so I might, uh, I might, have, I might be familiar. Yeah, with Yeah, if I play it for you, you'll hear it. Yeah. You probably recognize it. So we want to do. Well, we got to create the method. Yeah. And that'll be song. Yep. Uh. Go back to the test. Yeah, and I think what we're going to do is is this is going to be our in-memory implementation. We'll extract the interface out from it. Um, it. So multiple yeah, songs. Uh, so let's well let's rename the song repository first to make that clear. And we'll call it in-memory song repository. Hello. We don't need to change the local variable names, right? That's no. In fact, we don't because yeah. we actually uh, eventually that will become the interface, and so yeah. we then we just cancel. have to rename it back. So that's fine. Yeah. Um. So, uh, sure. So let's now do the next step. We want to add more than one song, or. No, I don't think we need to do that. <clears throat> OK. So yeah, basically what it says on 30, let's create the service passing in the repository. So do we have that service yet, or we're creating a new one? We're creating a new one, um, but we're going to basically be forced to create a new constructor. Mm. Oh, creating a new one. We're gonna we're gonna instantiate a, a song service. Oh, okay. Oh, song service. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if we had it. We were making a new service. No, we're taking the existing service and we're gonna pass in the repository to its constructor. Yeah. Which it doesn't support. So we'll go right. ahead and create that. We want a new constructor, right? Uh, we want to create a constructor, yes. Yeah. Yep. And let's hold on to that field. So go ahead and hit enter, and then we can add the field. Did you want to call it song repository or just repository? Uh, yeah, song repository. Yeah. yeah. That's good. OK. I, I always like my repositories named, even if there's only one. Yeah. You were saying hold on to that buffer? Uh, no, uh, click on, on the gray and do an alt enter. Oh, create a field. Uh, create field. Yeah. Final. Yes. And... So it doesn't like it because the other constructor doesn't create, uh, doesn't create uh... it, um, which is fine. So let's just create an, uh, uh, we'll just assign it to be. Actually, we don't need to this. <clears throat> right. 
assign it, you want to assign it to what? Like uh, we'll memory? just do a new one. A new in memory one, yeah. Since that's the only one right now. Yeah. <laughs> now I guess. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, song search is not final, so we're good. Okay. Uh, can you delete that blank line? IntelliJ always adds a blank line whenever it does that, and it's really annoying. <laughs> At least annoying to me. <laughs> Uh, all right, so you can delete 31. Um, and I would put a space before 30 because basically that's what we're testing. We're testing yeah. uh, that when we create a song service with a repository that has songs in it, we now expect if we do a search, we will find that song. So that's, that's our assertion. Uh, so uh, Mahai asks, uh, any advice for on Spring Boot? And so my advice is um, Spring.io and Spring Academy has a bunch of good materials. Uh, there are lots of other materials um, elsewhere, but that's that's where I'd start. I'd start with the Spring Guides. And I'll give my advice that I really need to put into an article so I can just point to it, which is come up with a project that is of interest to you, just like we're doing here. We're creating a project that's of interest to us. Uh, create a project that's of interest to you and implement it. Um, follow tutorials and modify the tutorials. Build on the tutorials. Don't just follow them and then say you're done and move on to something else. Use the tutorials as a foundation for building other stuff. Um, but if you can find a project that is of interest to you, that will help you um, come up with interesting features, and that's what you want. Uh, so that way, you have to exercise building building stuff. Um, above all, learn uh, learn how to write tests. And that's my advice. All right. You were muted. Muted. I was muted. Yeah. Yep. So. Uh, so we want to call the search by theme on the song service. What? Hey. Right. And what's our expectation is that it contains exactly that song. I still have it in the buffer. I do not. Actually, there I do have a little cheat for the control shift. Yeah, control shift B. Let me get my cursor back where I want it to be. Yeah, you never you never saved it to the buffer. Uh, I never did. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it was it was saved in the OS buffer, not IntelliJ. right, and that doesn't get that. If right. IntelliJ yeah. doesn't see it as being it doesn't a, know about a, it yeah, as being a copy, yeah, it doesn't save it. Yeah. yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Should fail gloriously. Well, let's be specific. How was this gonna fail? <laughs> I know you're gonna say that. Um so well won't have we haven't even written the code for add, but that'll be a no op, so we won't know it didn't do anything on line twenty nine. Right. Line 31, again, well, it'll assign the song repository object to the field, but we're not going to do anything about it. So then we right. can do anything with it. So then on 33, when we search, it's going to be like, I got nothing on fire. So it's going to have a search result of empty. So I think we're going to get a null pointer exception. You think we are? OK, cool. Let's, uh, let's not run all the tests. Let's just run oh. the I.O. free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were right. And that's because in the other constructor for song service, <clears throat> um, 
we create the empty song searcher, which we do not do uh, in in the second. Oh. Right. I was going to ask, like, why we're not we should be doing something with song searcher. Okay. Yeah, so let's let's um, what we'd like is we'd like it to fail not with a null pointer exception. We'd like it to fail with with an empty list. Right. So let's so this is where in TCR we basically just assert that actually we couldn't assert that from here. Um, we would assert that we would get a null pointer exception, which which is why I don't think TCR would work for me because you'd want the test to pass our expectation anyway. I guess we could we could modify the assert if we were doing TCR. We could say, okay, we got a failing test. Uh, we want to do one small thing to get it to pass. So, so our assertion is too broad. So to sort of take a smaller step, we'd assert that um, the search by theme returns an empty list, and then ratchet it up to actually return that right. song. Um, but we're not doing TCR. So right. Uh, so let's. Um, I think uh, what we want to do is we want to have uh, we want to basically duplicate the creation of the song searcher here. So now we won't get the null exception and we'll get an empty string back. Right. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Um, even though it's, I was going to say, even though it's not refactoring time, we could refactor the constructors and, and centralize it. Um, but I think we can, I can, we, we think we can wait on that. All right. So now, uh, now we need to work on, I'm not sure why the empty space is there. Do you need to do something? Uh, so now <clears throat> there's no, no code that song service needs to do just yet. Um, yeah, and so this is this is sort of the 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 problem with not testing the repository right now. There's basically two things missing. There's the implementation of the repository to track songs. And there's the missing functionality of song service to read from the repository. That feels like too much code to write for one test. Song service or song searcher? You meant song service, right? Uh, yes, yeah, song service. OK. <clears throat> so there's the repository implementation that has to track songs where add has to work. And plus, we don't even have a a way to read stuff out of 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 the repository. Um, hmm. I think I want to take a step back. Meaning disable this test and work a little bit lower layer. Um, no, I think I think uh, instead of I think I want to throw away the usage of our in memory song repository uh, and just make it a list. And then we can encapsulate that list into the repository. Because what we're basically writing is, is a list, right? We're right. Our repository is going to be have, have an add method and a way to get all the stuff in it. And that's just a list. So we're sort of, we, I think we're, we're premature in, in extracting the, the in-memory repository. OK, so let's see. I'm going to delete. Yeah, so so unsafe uh, delete. <laughs> uh, no, no. Let's let's just instead of in memory song repository, just say list of song. Oh. Just we'll still call it internally. We'll still call it song repository, but we'll it'll be a list of of song. So you just say on the right, uh, you'll do array list. Oh. And then open close angle bracket. And then on the left side, it'll be the type will be list of song. Uh, 
Uh, no, service is not a controller. Service is part of our uh, application use case layer. Controllers are in adapters. All right. Uh, and now let's change our constructor on 32 to be uh, to be of type list. So let IntelliJ, I think IntelliJ will let you do well, that. Well, let's see what it says. Yeah, change signature. Change signature, yeah. Um, Whoop. Too too fast. I'm not Just sure. Just change it on. I don't know which one it did. Yeah, let's, let's go, go back. It, let's go back into. Let's go into song service and look. Yeah, it changed the wrong one. <laughs> Undo. Can we specify? So again, that? Alt Enter is your shortcut for the bulb. For yeah, the light bulb. Yeah. So we want the third one because we want it basically where it, it shows it removes the oh, memory right, song repository. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and now let's change our song service on the bottom on line 11. Uh, what is it doing in the constructor that we just modified? It's probably broken. Yeah. Let's change its type. Here. No, no. Let it. Let IntelliJ do it. We want to change the field. Yep. Now I'll cause the <clears throat> constructor above to to be a problem. That's fine. And there we'll just say uh, empty list. Is there a no? The, the, no. There's nothing automatic that's going to help us here. Like that. Yep. Uh, and we can go ahead and delete in memory song repository because we'll recreate that in a bit. All right. So if we run this test, what do we think will happen? Well, Song Search is still building its own thing, right? Independent, so right. it'll get the same. I think it'll be the same. It'll be the same thing. Yeah, yeah basically the 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 found songs will be empty. Yep. Yep. All right, that's good. And it's exactly top of the hour. Do you want to take a quick break? Yeah, actually, I I wanted to um. For the, the folks who are watching who. I've often wondered this, and it came up yesterday when I think uh, I'd said something about, like, oh, it's top of the hour. So how many people know or don't know what the phrase top of the hour means? Because it's I think it comes from analog clocks. Yes. Right? So people that have grown up with only digital clocks, yes. does top of the hour have meaning to you? Or is it, do you get it? So I just wonder if it's a term I should stop using because there's a certain generation that doesn't know what it means. You know, so that's interesting because that. uh, uh, we got Asher, uh, my son, a new chair uh, for for holiday birthday, um, and so we we're putting it together. And I said, "Turn the the screw clockwise." Right. Same issue. Uh, so same <laughs> issue. It's like if, if if all you, I mean, heck, nobody even wears watches anymore unless it's in like a digital Apple Watch or something. Um, would you even know what clockwise means? Uh, so yeah, so same kind of thing. I think. He knew what it meant because basically for years, you know, whenever we build something, that's what I say. It's like, okay, clockwise is this way and uh, counterclockwise is this way. Right. Um, but I think it's, I I feel like, you know, there, there are idioms we use that doesn't necessarily mean you had direct experience with with the thing. Where it came from. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. On that note, food for thought for a yeah. break. I think right. five probably be fine. All right. See you in five.
All right, folks, just as a reminder, if uh, you want to find me on various social media, Mastodon, LinkedIn, and so on, uh, ted.devabout is where to find me. That has all the links to my social media, where, I, where I'm at. Uh, and if you're not already a member of my Discord community and you want to talk about basically the things we talk about here on stream, uh, writing Java code, Spring Boot, testing, domain-driven design, test-driven development, hexagonal architecture, all those things. Uh, uh, join the Discord. And there's a great community. You can ask questions. You can participate in discussions. And uh, we'd love to, love to have you there. All right. So test fail as expected. Uh, let's see if we can get it to pass. So where were we by brain? So oh right, add song is not actually adding a song to. Uh, no, that's that's fine. It's oh. um, it's the constructor that we need to to fix, right? Because what we're testing is is again on the top line thirty one our constructor that if we give the constructor uh, a repository, a repository, oh. um, right, right. then it should be able to create a song searcher from that song repository's contents. So I. Th think uh, this is actually going to be relatively straightforward. Song, song repository right now is a list. Song searcher. Yeah. It has a constructor that takes varag songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing that takes a list. Yeah, so we've got <clears throat> two choices. Uh, we convert from the call site. We can uh, we convert the list that we get into an array. Uh, the other option is we create uh, an alternate creation on the song searcher that takes a list. So the array can go in as the varogs. The varogs will understand the array. Yeah. So varogs is is basically syntactic sugar for an array. Got it. So the pros and cons of each approach. If we did, the constructor. Well, I guess it depends what we ultimately want to use. Well, I think both. I think both are useful. So I would, uh, I would lean towards uh, creating an additional constructor that takes a list instead of the var args, or an additional create method, actually. Oh, instead of the constructor, you mean additional create method? Well, here's where it's like: do we do we create since this the constructor is private? Um, it would have to be a create method. We could oh, make right. the, the constructor public. Um, the other thing is we could migrate the constructor. A list would be more convenient for the constructor because right now we convert the list to a stream. Uh, sorry, we convert the array to a stream. Um, Down here. It's a little bit more awkward, not terribly so. And it would make that easier as well if uh, create song searcher took uh, took a list. In fact, so really, it, a stream might even be more optimal because we're we're always doing something. We're always processing what we get. But we'll start with a list. So would we just change the signature of create song searcher, or make a new factory do parallel change? Um, well, we want to have we want to have both, so we don't want to replace it. Got it. So a new one. Yeah. So 
So for this one, instead of this one, we want a new version that takes the list. Right. So it would be like that. Yeah. Hey, Gopher Code. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Right. Oops. Names okay? Yep. Uh, so here at this level, song searcher should the, the name of the variable should not be song repository. What we call it? Songs? I think songs is fine. Okay. Should I move this up above the uh... Uh, yeah, it's probably a good idea. So now we can call the other constructor and convert the list here to, to the array. Does it take? Oh, it does hurt. Oh, wait a second. No, no, no. OK, sorry. I was runaway driver. No, oh, you were not runaway. I, I oh, you did give an sure. instruction. I I'm actually not sure about this part of it. Um, right. So that's actually a better description. So here, uh, yeah. we want it to continue to be an array. Is there a song that's like two array? There it is. There we go. And we have to give it that that type structure again so it oh. knows what kind of array it is. So that's is that inside? Uh, so uh, yeah, right there. Song open close square bracket colon colon new. Oh colon colon new. Right. So if we so do I, that, is that going to yeah. pass? I think it will. I think it will. No, it's shift F10. No? Why did shift F10 not work? There we go. I don't know. I must have had the cursor some way funky. Sweet. All right. Passed. Let's commit. I'm trying to turn into business terminology. I don't know, not so much businessy. Yeah, so I, I, um, you have a different I, idea. I, I think something more towards more specific of what we did was uh, song service initialized with songs from uh, and in sort of in quotes from a repository, basically from the outside. Do you want to change repository from the outside? Yeah, because it's that's really what it's doing. It's basically from from the outside, and it's not. Uh... Actually, how uh, let's say song service loads songs upon startup. That's actually more a little bit less technical and, and perhaps even more precise. Yeah. All right. I'm with you. Yeah. Okay.
So now, um, what would our next test be? So <clears throat> they're loaded on startup, and we probably want to look at the symmetrical. What's the what's the opposite of of loaded? Unloaded. <laughs> well, so. Uh, so we load upon startup. What's the other aspect of persistence? Is when we add a song, it should be persisted. Right. New test. Yeah. Added songs. You said persisted. Uh, I think we can just say added songs are saved. Even better. So now, like, this would be a um, setup. And then we'd add another song? Uh, Is that what you're thinking? I was thinking that it starts out empty and we add one and it should have that song. I mean, we could do that and then it should have both. Um, that might be better to show, but uh, I, I don't. It's too big a step? Or you think it's not that it's too big a step. Um, somehow it feels less precise to do it. Uh, but I guess we're, we could build on the previous test. So is it is it better to add one to nothing and we end up with one, or is it better to add one to one and we end up with two? Which is sort of more complex behavior. Let's go with let's go with basically what you had that we start off with with one song as part of the setup, um, and then and uh, when we add a song we got another fire song oh yeah <laughs> i'm i'm not oh, i'm, sure. I'm um, tempted to do ring of fire but uh let's do something that's slightly that's, that's a bit cliche it's a bit obvious so there's one it's about fire, but fire is not in the title. So that's what mm -hmm. makes us interesting, right? Thematic songs. Right. Right. If it's in the title, well, that's easy to find or easier to find. Right. So what were you going to say? Uh, so here, though, we want to add it through the song service, not through the repository. Oh, right, 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 right. right. Yeah. I had it right. Did I? The AST one will expand to what you want. Ah, that's as a tab was what I was missing. I knew I was. So you can add tab or or enter. Or enter. Let me try it again. Enter. Ah, that works too. Cool. So now we want to make sure it's saved. Mm -hmm. And again, we're working through the service. But we don't have a query. Do oh, we do. Oh, well, it's well. What's our what's our repository, right? So here we're we're here we're testing the interactions between the service and the repository. Uh, so here we're saying if when we add a song to the service, it is persistent, and our persistence right now is is our list. Right. Now we just want count. Is that sufficient? Uh, or... We could we could certainly start there. So we can say has size. Yeah. 
now is that going to work and so maybe we in our test we want to say we maybe want to be more explicit and say save to repository on the test name oh test name yeah that makes sense yeah so what's the uh, prediction that's going to be one not two Oh, interesting. It does, uh, it dumps the. Yeah, that, I wonder if that's a recent change because I don't remember doing that before. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember seeing that. It's interesting. And it's the assert. I like it. Yeah, I do like it. That's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> All right. So now. Um... Now it gets tricky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because um, it never it it so we we pass in a reference to this repository, uh, but it doesn't actually use the repository as its storage mechanism, right? And how do we, and so the goal is to move it to that without breaking all of creation. Because <laughs> we probably don't, we have a lot of tests that are using the other. So, parallel let's change. See. If we do the parallel change to get this to pass, then moved everything to the new. What are you thinking with a parallel change? I don't beyond that I don't know the specifics. I'm just thinking at a higher level. Like oh, oh. if we did a parallel change, could we Right, get but this I'm not sure what pass? the what the parallel would be. Yeah. Uh I think we have no choice. Well, we do have a choice, but I th I think the the next way forward um is to do uh, a prepare refactoring, which pulls the repository actually into its own class. Because once it's in its own class, right, all, all problems are solved by either adding or removing a level of indirection. Uh, and what we need is to add a level of indirection. Right. So let's disable the, uh, the currently failing test. And since we're going to do a refactoring that may or may not work out, let's do a commit. And so we can just say um, start of prepare refactoring. And so now we can use the magical uh, extract delegate refactoring uh, on the song repository. At the field level? Yes. Nope. One more meta key. Yep. <laughs> well, extract delegate doesn't have his own shortcut, does it? Only through refactor this. Yeah, it, it doesn't. Yeah. I guess it's not that commonly used. It's not, it's not terribly common. Yeah. yeah. And so here's where we can call it song repository. This would go. Uh, would it be package application or dot? We'll or? leave it an application when we extract the interface. Interface. We'll move the move stuff that around. OK. Yeah. Um, make sure you generate accessors there at the bottom. And which do we? Anything else we're checking? Nope. Nope. Escalate, fine. Yep. OK. Firing.
Ooh, it's unhappy. Yes, it's unhappy because uh, it wasn't necessarily initialized. And so final is, is having a problem, uh. which uh, is a bit annoying. Um, but that's fine. We actually don't want it to be final. I don't know why it made it final. That makes no sense. Was it final in the source before we did the refactor? Yeah, but that shouldn't matter. I think that's a bug because we we basically said provide accessors. And if you're going to provide a setter, then it, it can't be final. Then it, then it can't yeah. be final. So that, oh, that's that, a good point. That's a bug. That's a bug. I should, I should file that. Let me write that down. You make a note. So at hour 125 minutes, uh, extract delegate bug. Okay. Um, so all of our tests should still pass. This shouldn't have changed. This shouldn't have changed anything, uh, especially since we weren't even really using it. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, so let's go back to uh, the song service. And what we want uh, <clears throat> is hmm. I think that's fine. And now I think we can re-enable the test, and then I think the change is easy. Okay. Rerunning, make sure we've got the same failure. Yep. Thanks for the hydrate okay. request. Go for code. I'm going to go hydrate. Oops. Actually, it'll be a caffeinate, but close enough. <laughs> So we had the same fail. Right. And so now um, what we want, uh, though, uh, oh, no, we need to make one more change. So undo the disable. Or bring um, back the disable. Yes. Okay. And the what we want to do is <clears throat> the reference that we pass into the song service should be the repository, not the list. Ah, here. Yeah. What's the usage we got on it? Two of them. So what we can do is we can introduce parameter with what we want. So the parameter we want to pass in is the actual song repository class so would we do cursor on song repository and then do the um control tell p for parameter uh, no, we'll take maybe doing Let's one that. yeah you, can just, it one. You, you can just delete the one ah. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think that would work. I'm, I was sort of surprised it suggested that because mm. uh, that's not what we what we want. Um, what we want to do is we want to have a local variable that uh, so we want to push the creation of the song repository into here. So we don't want to just do a set song repository here. We want to do this song repository equals new. Um, 
I'm not sure what happened there. Yes, that's that's fine. Now what you had bef- what you had was fine. Um, yes. but delete delete the we're not gonna call the a constructor with a parameter, so delete the red stuff. Is that what you meant by the red stuff? Yes. Okay. Um what's it complaining about? Oh, song repository is final. Is that what it's complaining about? Yeah. But it took a yeah. again. Oh, 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 okay. Yes, because it was already assigned, so we can't reassign it. Uh-huh. Um, let's... Uh... Do we no longer need to do the new on line 11 and have it... Yeah, so let's let's new it up um in the other constructor as well we probably could have inlined the let's let's undo a step <clears throat> a couple of steps to get back to yeah there? yeah uh <clears throat> if you alt enter on where you are what does it propose nothing uh can we can we inline it I don't necessarily want to inline. I want to inline the creation. Oh, can you go up to the um, line 11, the song repository field and alt enter okay. there? Uh, move initializer to constructor. That's what we want. Ah, cool. All right. Now, um, we can uh, let's make line twenty two uh, a local variable, as in this way. Yeah. <laughs> Do you? Is this short lived? So song repository one is fine. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's because it's conflicting with the incoming name and the the field. Right. Um. And then what we want is, <clears throat> uh, so the red stuff on twenty three that should have signed it to the local variable, not the this. One second, Ted, I have to pause for a second. Yep. Yeah, and so once uh, once we do that, then we'll be able to extract both those, I think, as we should be able to introduce that as a parameter. Although we may not be able to. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, I didn't hear what you were saying. I had to no, no, that's fine. I was, I was, I was talking to 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 just to the viewers. Uh, so yeah, so let's do uh, that. Uh, assign that to the local variable song repository one. Ah, I'm sorry. Call no, no, you you were you're right. So call set rep, call the set on our local variable. Ah. Got yes. it. And now assign that local variable uh, to this dot song repository. So after 23. This is a bit of a roundabout way, and I'm not sure it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not entirely sure where you're going, but I'm just uh, I'm definitely in driver <laughs> mode at the moment. So now let's. Yeah, I was hoping to introduce rep, uh, introduce parameter, right? But because song repository doesn't take anything in its constructor, that's uh, not going to work. Were you thinking of? 
So I, let's let's try it. I'm, I don't I don't know if it'll I don't think it'll work, but let's do an introduce parameter on that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's call it song repository new. Oh, interesting. The cursor moved there. Like that? Yeah. And hit enter. Ah, Whoa. it did do the right thing. Good on you, IntelliJ. You made up for the bug. So, um, if we I almost want to like watch that video really slowly to see. So, what we just saw. did it really do the right thing? Yes. Um, so, it didn't quite do everything we need uh, because it, we're still calling the set song repository on the on the inside here, but we want to actually push that out. So it actually didn't do everything that we needed it to do. So I take back my admiration. It, it, <laughs> it, it looked like it did it because it deleted two lines, but it actually just replaced it with one. Um, is there a refactoring that could push that behavior out? Uh, not really. Once you're in constructors, it gets a little bit hairy. So I think what we'll do, <clears throat> uh, all our tests should still pass though. Let's make sure we, because we've got, yeah, we're in a just... really odd state. I was just thinking, like, we haven't run the test in a while. Yeah, OK, good. Um, so let's just, yeah, let's let's delete line 22, sorry, or cut line 22. And uh, let's go into the callers of that constructor, there are two, yeah. Um, so that one, uh, pastes uh, into the line above. Um, and let's create, um, so I think, uh, uh, our variable names are, are now getting confusing. So let's, uh, because now that we actually have a song repository class, um, let's rename the variable on line 29 to be song list. Yeah. And now we can uh, create a song repository and do a set on it. <clears throat> You may not like this, huh? Yeah, because you've basically you got some red, so it's not going to yeah. be able to autocomplete. Um, so you can just call this song repository, delete the word new. So you can just delete the space. Oh, right. The word new, and then say equals new song repository. Actually, we could have extracted to a variable. Uh, let's do that. So undo. Okay. How far back? Uh, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Basically, until we get song repository new. OK. Yeah. Uh, on the next line at the end, extract new song repository to uh -huh. variable. And look at that. It actually selected the name that we want. So do that. Uh, swap 32 and 33. Yep. Look. What? There you go. Uh, let's drop the word new while we're here. Let's re just rename it. And wow. now in our, uh, and let's go basically, we could probably copy and paste this code in the next test. Okay. And go to the other usage, which was yeah. 45. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Uh, let's again rename song repository and 43 to song list. And then you should be able to paste, paste. what we had in, instead of 45. It... Oh, you didn't copy the creation of the 
song service. Thought it did. Yeah, so you want 32 to th through 34. Uh, yeah, you're right. I didn't copy that. And then basically replace that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's run our tests. I still think we're OK, but I'm not 100% sure. Yep. Yeah, OK, good. Uh, <clears throat> so let's now clean up our constructor, because I, th I think it got a little messed up in the song service. Yeah, so we don't need, uh, so let's, uh, let's delete the first parameter on line 20. Oh. Actually, is there a, uh, interesting. Oh, actually, ah, so what we want to do first is on line 21, instead of getting it from the list, we want to get it from the repository. So uh, in, instead of song repository as the parameter, say song repository new dot get. Oh. Yeah. And now we can get rid of the parameter. Ah, yes. Okay. And run the tests. All right, great. Uh, let's rename that to drop the word new. All right, and let's, we'll clean up the other constructor later. Uh, so okay. let's go back to our tests. Um, let's re-enable this test. So still expect it to fail in the same way. Great. <clears throat> uh, let's change our assertion because what we want is not to assert against the song list. What we want uh, is to actually assert against the repository. Right. Yeah. So we want to say the repository when we get the list from the repository. So song repository dot get. Mm. that should have size of two. So that should still fail. Yeah. Um, now, we need to update the repository when we modify it. <clears throat> So now in our add song, that's where we need to. So all this was was our prep, preparatory refactoring to get to the point where we can finally in add song uh, modify the modify it to update the repository. So, do you so far, it's all, yeah. So so far, it's all connected to science to song searcher, right? So would we would this be a parallel chain thing where we work with song repository, get that to work? It's not a parallel change. It's it's we have to update two things. Oh. We have to update the in memory, and we have to save and update the external memory. So we're we're basically synchronizing uh, our Got storage. It. OK. Yeah, I hadn't thought of it that way. Hmm. Yeah, you want to do get and then dot add. And yes, this is very much uh, uh, feature envy, and we'll fix that. Yeah, yeah. Wait a second. No, just need the field. No, no, no. you got to do dot add because we need to add it to the repository. Oh, right. 
I was thinking I had to put it in a local variable, but I don't. I can just do this. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Thank now you. the feature memory is very it's, obvious. It's very obvious, yes. Yeah. Hmm. I was concerned that we might get that. Uh, and that's what are we getting? You'll notice which test. Let's see which test failed. So a different Not test the one we were failed. working on. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and this is because an empty song service gets <sighs> starts its life as an empty list, which is an unmodifiable list. Right, because we originally had it that it was. And here's where TCR would basically revert our code. <laughs> which I think is kind of unfair. Yeah, so set line 17, we uh, we want to change that to just be a new array list. And so that's sort of the danger of, if you're not sort of aware of it, it's the danger of using something like that. Something like that, meaning? Meaning uh, collections.empty lists, which is an so if you use empty list or use a list dot of, you're going to end up with an unmodifiable list. Oh, right. They give you the immutable list. Yeah. So would this fix it? This should fix it. OK. We'll find out. Yep. Yeah, sweet. All right, let's commit. How would we phrase this? Um, Song service now saving to repository and? I think you can just say uh, uh, song service now persists additions to repository. Or you can say song adds. Like that? Yep. <laughs> so, uh, so it works. We probably should do some refactoring. Yeah. So one more factoring we could do is um, <clears throat> pretty much the the feature envy we want to fix is any any use of setter or, or getter, and so uh, we should basically that should just go in the song repositories constructor. This one here. Yeah. Is there a uh... Nope. There's no, unfortunately, once you're in constructors, because they're, it's interesting how IntelliJ doesn't treat them as regular methods. Um, and so you end up, uh, you could extract it to a method and create a create factory method. Um, and then you could inline it, that into a constructor. So let's do that. So let's take 16 and 17 and extract that to a method. And we'll just call it create. Um, now we can. Uh, Interesting. Why did it do final? We don't want yeah. That. That's weird. Just do a join on those two lines. Don't tell me. I really need more monitors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I closed that. No, it's still here. Control Shift J. And then we can get rid of the final. OK. Uh, we should be able to make that static. So you can uh, click on Create 
or you could just type static and see what happens. What are we going to say? Click and create and, uh, and, and I can... bring up the refactor this menu. Ah, that one would do it. Yeah. I always recommend folks on Windows assign uh, a different global, uh, a different key map because Control Alt Shift is really awkward. Yeah. So make static. Uh, yes, refactor. I don't know what it would. Yeah. Perfect. And so now we can basically take that and move that to song repository. And escalate because we want to make that yes. public. Yeah. Um, I think that's fine for now. So let's go back to here. Uh, let's go to where we're, where else? Uh, let's go. So let's do this the sort of the proper way. Um, let's go to song repository and look for access to the, the setter. Is there any other access to it? We might have some in our tests. The setter, not the getter. Yeah, yeah. It took me a second to. Yeah. Uh, so let's go and fix fix those to use the create method. Um, maybe oh. that will will it pick that up automatically. So let's. Um, where is this create? This create I is did... called from here, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we uh, want to go back to the to the get right on. Yeah. But first, we need to to uh, make it so that the create method um, take takes a list. So let's on thirteen oh. extract that as a parameter, introduce parameter on that. The whole thing no, on, the, on, the, no, on the array list. Ah, what do from here? It'll do from anywhere inside that those okay. parentheses. Uh, and let's call this song list. All right, and now uh, if we scroll down, oh, that's it. Um, what's that other construct there? Oh, we'll we'll leave that. Uh, so let's um, on the on the getter on line seventeen. Where is that used? Service uses it twice, and the right. test uses it. Right. Um, so I think I lost the, the the train of thought here. I wanted to add a parameter to the create method because I don't want the setter. Oh, so let's look at usage as a setter. OK. That's what I wanted to get rid of. So there's the internal usage, which is kind of ridiculous. Let's let's not let's just assign do the assignment on line third. Oh no, we have to do the setter. Never mind. Sorry. Oh, because because uh, it's a static method. Right. Uh, so let's do the setter. Let's look at the test. Yeah, that one. Um, yeah, so we can replace new song repository with uh, just song repository dot create. Ah. Yeah. I was hoping IntelliJ would pick up the fact that that was exactly what we just refactored to, but it didn't. Mm. And so. I can do, get rid of this. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. Why is it complaining? So uh, hit control, uh, go to the reference. Which create is what create is it calling? Uh, 
Ah. So what is the what is the what is the error message that's being reported there on 31? Uh, so don't hit Alt Enter if you want to basically just mouse over it, uh, and it tells you. So uh -huh. what it's telling you is the required type is array list, but what we have is a list. And so when we did the extraction, uh, it it took array list instead of the instead of list. So let's fix that on line eleven on the bottom. Uh, let's run our tests. Yeah, I was just thinking that <laughs> it's probably a good time. Yep. And let's fix the other test to do the same thing, to use the create method. Yeah. So, so on the... the top, line 39. Oh, 39. You can jump to it also, yeah. Oh, I was going to do this. Yeah. So 43. Right, we did create. Now I can delete this and it's green. Right. Run the test. Yep. All right, so I think there's a good place to stop, especially since I know you're you're up against time. Yeah, in theory, I'm about to find out, but. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, I did tell them to come tell me if the plans changed. So I think. Right. Uh, so this was pretty, pretty much fast. starting the starting to fix uh, uh, fix or fixed some feature envy for song repository. Sounds good. Should we do a commit and push? Sure. We may, I think we haven't looked at. Uh, yeah, I didn't want. Message. I know there's some chat messages, but those were sort of off off topic, and I know they were okay. You were, you were up against time slot, so yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I figured you you could uh, head out, and and I would talk about those, or we could Sounds talk about good. those until you have to leave. So. Oh man. The whole agile prime time pressure thing. <sighs> yeah. So I'm just skimming, but yeah. Major sigh. Yeah. All I can say is sorry you're in that situation. I'm gonna mute for a second and before I yep. sign off and just double check me. Sure. Yeah, so um Estimates are, are sometimes a fact of life. There's a whole other topic around doing estimates. Uh, but estimates are estimates. They are not guarantees. They are not promises. They are estimates. They are, I don't, I even prefer the term best guesses. They are a guess. Uh, and so, A, you shouldn't feel bad if you don't hit your estimates. Very few people do. And certainly almost nobody does on a consistent basis. Um, Secondly, uh, you shouldn't be blamed by others for not hitting your estimates. Uh, estimates are guesses. And anybody who insists that, that they want actual promises, um, you need to then say, if you want to promise, how sure do you want me to be? You want me to be 100% sure? Good. I think it should take me two weeks. But if you want 100% promise, I'm going to say two months. But if you are willing to put up with some uh, possibility that I exceed the estimate, then I'm willing to say, OK, I think the 80% chance is I'll hit it in three weeks. There's certainly the possibility I could do it in less. The problem is, is most management doesn't recognize the idea that, that these are guesses and that there are probabilities associated with it. So there's a whole area of, of estimates and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, and so. Uh, so the fact that your scrum master is forcing you to put estimates, that's not their job. The scrum master it shouldn't is not management. And, and it's unfortunate that it has become, uh, this is why I think scrum is, is a complete and utter failure, mostly because of how it gets implemented. Scrum master should not be demanding anything. Scrum master is there to help guide. 
the problem is in most places that do this, they do tend to be see their position as basically project managers. So uh, I've been through this stuff in the past 20 years and seen what was wonderful about Agile has become basically another word for project management. Yeah. It's horrific. Yeah. Um, and so Scrum Masters in most places are project managers and all they care about is estimates and schedules and things like that, in which case they're not really Scrum Masters uh, and you're not doing Scrum. Uh, you may be doing something, but it is not Scrum and it is not Agile. Yes. And so uh, this is a common anti uh, a common problem with Scrum like and because this isn't even Scrum um, and with similar things is spending hours discussing and estimating task, which is pointless. Stop doing it. Do the work. There's no point in getting more precise than, I think this is going to take a day or two. I think this is going to take a week. Anything that takes longer than a day or two, though, should just be split. And so I think one of the key things that really helps uh, in a lot of these situations is learning how to split whatever you're given, whether they're called stories, whether they are or not, um, whether they're called requirements, whatever they are, if you're given it and it's going to take more than two days, say, what piece of this can we implement that we could verify and do that? So what you end up with is not estimates, but a bunch of things that take one to two days. And if you can't split it, um, I would challenge you to, to, to really try and split it. There's almost always a way. Uh, if you look up splitting patterns, you'll find some, some good techniques. But there... Uh, I used to do this early in my career, take lots of times to do estimates and there's no point to it. You will not get better at doing estimates by spending more time on it. What you wanna do is as a team, don't do planning poker, put all of the stuff on cards, virtual or not, and basically say, is this one or two days or is this more? And put it into two piles and then go through the piles of the ones that are more and say, we need to split these until we can put that in the other pile. And then you end up with a pile and it shouldn't be a big pile. You shouldn't be estimating more than a couple of weeks work at this level. And you end up then with a bunch of cards or, or things or stories, whatever you want to call them, each one of which is, is one to two days. Then you don't need to estimate. You just say, how many cards do we got? Multiply it by two. That's the number of days. And, and strengths. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know if I, I, say, name, but... I just said something about um, there avoid the trap of falling into getting better at estimates. Yeah. The industry has had 40 years of failure at estimates. We know that we cannot estimate well. And it's not us as a failure as humans. It is the the fact that we're building something new. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like, hey, how long is it going to take you to build a car? Well, we already know how to build car A. We're just building a second one. Right. That we know. But we're not doing that. We're right. we're we're designing the car, and that is much harder to estimate. Matter of fact, it's we've shown it's impossible to estimate. So well, I will I will say that there are techniques to improve estimation. Um, there's Monte Carlo and this is forecasting oh, right. and, and right, things right. like that. The problem is is that most management doesn't understand probability. Right. They don't understand probabilities. I would I would call that forecasting, not estimating. In other words. They could improve their ability to plan by using the Monte Carlo forecasting stuff. I guess I wouldn't call it estimating. I would say it gives, right. maybe I'm being pedantic here. Um, it, it, it serves the same purpose, but I agree that um, there's, there's no point. To, to me, the best way to estimate is to break stuff down until it's obvious how long it takes. And the stuff that you don't know about, you'll say, look, we don't know. We need to do some research on this. So it takes as long as it takes. Right. Um, no, but it's it's a it, the whole idea of schedules and dates and so on is is management dysfunction in understanding how software is developed. Unfortunately, as developers, we have little power over over changing that. And um, and I want to say that uh, I'll see you, Mike. And I want to say that 
um, sprints are not deadlines. Sprint commitments are not promises. And anybody who says that they are does not understand Scrum, period. And I'm very adamant about this because it is an extreme dysfunction and a completely unfair and really makes life terrible for people by saying you must finish this by the time you promised. Um, I would never work for such a place and I would be busy finding another job if I, if I felt that I couldn't change the situation. But I think this is uh, a completely 100% ridiculous thing to say, your sprints are deadlines and you must finish this work by this date. That is ridiculous, that is unfair, and that is not how software development works. And any place that is doing that does not understand how software development works and is treating developers like uh, basically order takers, short order cooks, and we are not. And I think this is what has given Agile and Scrum a bad name is a complete lack of understanding and misinterpretation of what the hell sprints and Scrum is all about. You look at the Scrum guide and it says nothing about you should be penalized if you don't hit your commitment. That is ridiculous because here's what happens. You're gonna say, I'm getting burned by not making my commitment. So I'm gonna give you bigger estimates to protect myself. I think this is gonna take a day. I'm gonna say it's gonna take a week and therefore I'm sure I'm gonna get it done so I don't get burned. And that is how software goes out of control. And I think this is ridiculous, but unfortunately it's commonplace. But you then have to decide, do you wanna continue working for this company or not? Um, how much you can influence uh, change, um, but ultimately you're gonna have to add a lot of buffer to your estimates if you are getting forced to abide by those estimates. And that's what happens. And that's what uh, management doesn't understand is that they say, I need you to get X done by a certain date. What date do you think you can get it, get it done by? If you know you're gonna be penalized for not meeting that deadline, you're gonna put in a huge buffer. And what happens is those buffers get added up by over the team and over the course of multiple releases. And this is why stuff takes 18 months, two years to deliver anything. Scrum masters are not project managers. If you go and look at the Scrum guide, nobody reads the Scrum guide and therefore nobody, very few people are actually following Scrum. And it's terrible and, it, and it's horrible and you shouldn't stand for it. Um, this is why I think we need unions for developers. We see ourselves as white collar workers and therefore knowledge workers and therefore we don't need unions. The fact is though, we don't have power and we need power because we need to push back against this ridiculous idea that we can estimate how long things take to the precision that management often wants and we can't. And that's too damn bad for them that they, they don't like it when we're late. <clears throat> well, then let us do our jobs. We're professionals. Um, and so uh, this is where there are small unions starting to, to grow because these are some of the issues. These are horrible working conditions. If you're asked, give me an estimate, I'm gonna hold you to that or penalize you. I'm gonna give you crappy estimates. Why wouldn't I? Um, and, and that's just not gonna be good for, for anyone. Um, the fact is, is, is that this misunderstanding of Scrum is commonplace. I hear nothing but, but horrible stories, whether they call it Agile or whether they call it Scrum. Um, I hear nothing but, but bad stories because all management does is basically replace the word project management. In the old days, we call this project management. Now they just call it Scrum. But it's the same thing of management demanding uh, meet this schedule or else. Um, <clears throat> so I mentioned this before. Yes, break things down into smaller pieces. You will you will be able to estimate smaller things rather than larger things. Uh, and so break them down into smaller pieces. But don't break down months worth of work. Break down the next two weeks of work, right? Because you're just talking about the the next sprint if you're forced to 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 commit to that. Um, and break it down to pieces that are smaller than a day. 
But <clears throat> if you are going to be held to your estimates, your job then is to pad your estimates. Because what else are you going to do? If you're penalized for missing deadlines, then give them longer deadlines. They're going to say, no, we don't want it by then. It's like, you either get it when, when it's done, otherwise don't ask me for estimates, just give me a date. And we'll write crappy code to get it out. And then we'll have to spend a lot of time maintaining it. And this is life at a lot of companies. Yeah, exactly, right? They give deadlines whether they know it or not. <clears throat> and I think ignorance is, is not an excuse. Management must, must if they're going to do software development, they must understand how software development works. And they don't, and they don't care. Uh, they most of them do not want to understand, and they think it's it's work that uh, is just like anything else. You push people, and they get it done, and that works for a while. Um, but it ends up with a crappy software, with people who don't care, with people who are looking for their next job, and that company will continue to lose good people and only get people who have who have no other choice. So the thing I look for when I'm hiring people, <clears throat> if you want to modernize and you want to innovate, um, I'd be careful about cost saving. I don't care about cost saving. I want to be modern, uh, which means very much having lots of tests, doing lots of refactoring. And what you want is somebody who is willing to learn. So <clears throat> questions I ask people when they're uh, when I'm looking at, at hiring them is, what new things have you learned and how did you do it? What do you now, what things have you tried to learn and decided, yeah, that was an interesting technique, but that didn't work for me. Because it's those people who, and we were talking about this much earlier in the stream, those people who try things out to see if they like it or not, rather than just say, I don't like it without really trying it, which is the reaction I get a lot to TDD is, oh, I don't like it. And I ask them, well, how have you tried it? How long have you spent with it? It's like, oh yeah, I, I spent an hour and I didn't like it. Like, I'm sorry, an hour is not enough time to know whether you can really like it and be effective with it. And yeah, a lot of what we see as, quote, agile is not agile. I've been around since, since before agile was a thing. Agile was a reaction to very heavyweight methods, and the pendulum sort of swung the other way. Um, but again, management has just replaced project management with quote, agile, and it's not really agile. And so you end up with the same pointless meetings, just with a different name. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, <clears throat> when you know, you've know you got lots of layoffs in the industry, and you've got lots of lots more software developers looking for jobs, um, it means that uh, management has more power, because we don't have unions. Right? If we had unions and widespread unions, you can you can bet your rear end that we would not have the massive layoffs that we have had, because you look at the the recent wins that uh, unions in the car industry and elsewhere have had, and they've prevented it. <clears throat> and so unions are power, and the fact is, in a capitalist society, we as workers, at least here in the U.S. In other countries, it's different because they have different laws about firing people. But here in the US, you are generally an at-will worker, which means you are at the whims of management. So if any management or company says you're part of a family, that's a load of crap. You're not. Um, if anything, you might be part of a sports team like Netflix sort of uh, uses that metaphor. But you're just, to a lot of companies, a replaceable cog. And so it does put more power into management if they can basically fire people and now have their pick of people who are desperate to get a job. I know lots of people who, who've been looking for many, many months, if not an, a year, uh, who are great software developers. But it will come back to burn them. I hope that software developers have a long memory and say, what happened in 2022 and 2023 when you fired a whole bunch of people? Are you going to do that again? Yes, they are. 
and then don't work for them? Or you, did you treat your people bad when because you could? I'm going to remember that and tell other people, and you're not going to get good developers anymore. So it'll really be a question of how long a memory do we as, as software developers have. Yeah, it's sad because it doesn't have to be this way. Um, and Jeepa Hill talks about this, that the the amount of, of money that we generate because even doing it in a crappy way, even doing software development in, in a really bad way makes so much money for companies that you could do it really bad and make a lot of money. And until you actually need good people to make money, this will continue <clears throat> forever. Yeah, so hopefully if nothing else, you're not alone. You're not the only one struggling with this. Yeah, deadlines, the whole idea uh, often is <clears throat> to push people, um, but a lot of times it has the, the negative side effect of, I'm not gonna make it anyway, so what's the point? I'm gonna get penalized no matter what, so I'm just gonna relax. And maybe I'm not going to even do as good a job as I might have had there not been a, a, a deadline. Yeah, and we're treated as code monkeys because they have all the power. And by they, I mean management, especially at large tech companies, but elsewhere too. Because again, this is I am in the US, and so this is very US-centric. Um, there are other countries who have much better and much stronger laws about how people can be laid off and what happens there. They have most likely different dysfunctionalities. But because of this fundamental aspect that companies make a boatload of money from software, that it doesn't have to be done very well. Yeah, so I, I don't... I'm not quite sure about what you're asking here, but um, Kanban is another thing. It's a, it's a great technique for, for sequencing work and figuring out what to do. Um, but ultimately, un, un, until the sort of the ideal way to work is don't have iterations, don't have sprints, just work on the most important thing to do next. Work as an actual team, which most companies don't. They're just a group of people. Um, and work on the most important thing, get that done, and then work on the next most important thing. Uh, the saying, start finishing and, and stop starting new things, start finishing what you already have in progress. So limiting work in progress is one of the key ways to, to get stuff, stuff moving. But ultimately, um, there's just, you know, to a certain extent, a lack of trust uh, and management has all the power. And so that, that uh, comes up in all sorts of, all sorts of bad ways. Um, and if if a product owner is, is looking at code, like that's not their concern. Um, <clears throat> even management, uh, you know, they can help you with code and 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 foster building learning processes and, and getting the team to work together. Um, <clears throat> but you shouldn't. Uh, but like product owners and scrum masters, they they shouldn't be looking at code. Uh, this is an amusing question <clears throat> because is anybody doing Scrum by the book as it, as it was actually meant to be done? And, I'm sh and I know there are companies that do that, but they are in the the, the, the small minority of companies. Most have, uh, like I said, basically just replaced project management with a different name, which is ter a terrible way to develop software. But it works because it's so darn efficient to create software uh, and make money off of it. In, in most places, even if it's really terrible software, um, because just the leverage that that software software brings. So I think, um, <clears throat> yeah, Kanban doesn't. I don't know that it that it 
doesn't encourage it. It doesn't force you to break things down into small pieces. Um, but if you are doing Kanban where you are limiting work in progress, because in my mind, if you're not limiting work in progress, you're not doing Kanban. Kanban means not just you have a storyboard and you go from you know to do to doing to done and delivered, um, but that it's you can't be doing more than one thing or two things. So if you limit work in progress and your items are huge, uh, you're going to find it better and have better flow to, to make them smaller. So I actually do think if you do it correctly with work in progress limits, it will eventually encourage you to create smaller items to, to, to work through. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, and this gets into all the, the story splitting and delivery and continuous delivery. I'm a huge believer in continuous delivery, um, getting, getting, you know, oh, it hurts to, to deliver. We'll do it more often. Right. That was one of the things from extreme programming, which is it hurts to do these things. It's painful to do these things. It's time consuming to do these things. And this almost non-intuitive way of saying, well, then do it more often. Right. It's a pain. It's painful for us to release. Well, if we do it more often, you know, then it actually becomes easier because you find ways to to ad adopt uh, different techniques and you deliver smaller pieces. Um, and uh, we tend to like to pile on rules and gates and and things that stop things from going to production. But what we need to do is actually make it easier. And this whole idea of releases, right? We want continuous delivery. It doesn't mean we're always delivering new features every minute, every time we push, um, but we wanna be able to. Uh, and that's 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 the fundamental and continuous delivery is, is I see it as sort of this overarching thing that really then encourages all the other good practices. Like if you're doing TDD, it's more likely that you can release stuff that you know works. Um, doesn't eliminate all bugs, but it makes it, if you do find a bug, it's faster to fix, and uh, you're much more likely to have have fewer bugs. But you still need to do things like do some design and talk to your customers. Um, a lot of times, developers are at multiple levels distant from the people who are actually using the product, and that's why so, a lot, so much software is terrible. I always think of expense software like Concur. It's terrible because the people who are using it and the people who are developing it <clears throat> they're not on the same page. And in fact, the people who are buying the software are not the people who are using it. So you have the principal agent problem. Well, different companies set budgets for roles and hiring in, in many different ways. Um, and so that's completely up to how the company, company does that. <clears throat> Some companies will have you know, here's the the salary band for this position. We have a uh, budget for these three positions that we're going to hire in in this period of time. Um, and then you you hire them. You do the best you can. Uh, sometimes it might not be enough, and you might have to search for longer, uh, which is something that often isn't taken into account by management. If we don't pay as well, then we may be able to find good people, but we probably will have to look for longer. Um, or we might be able to, because right now there's there are more people who've been laid off, and so there might be more people who are willing to accept a lower salary, and so we might be able to hire them, but we may not be able to keep them once uh, things turn around, which they always do. Uh, <clears throat> and ultimately, if you are hiring and you've got a budget and you want to hire somebody who's really good and can and can help you know, grow the team and 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 help the team get better, uh, that's going to cost you. And if you don't have the budget for that, <clears throat> there's not much you can do. Well, in some ways, Apple is lucky. <clears throat> I worked at Apple. Um, and not everything is, is uh, as good on the inside as it is from the outside. But the places where they really spend the time to understand what customers need, that's best. But it's not just that. You then have to have the developers also understand what the customer needs. So what gets shipped is not what the customer needs. It's what the developers understand the customer needs. Sometimes that's very much in alignment. And sometimes it's completely out of alignment. And you get products that's like, 
who is this for? This this makes no sense. All right. Um, that's all for today uh, That and the ranty portion of, of the stream. Uh, so thanks for hanging out. And hopefully um, it, it helps you, if nothing else, uh, realize that, that you're not alone. Um, and that uh, good developers are still hard to find. Um, but that, you know, currently where we are, it make, makes it difficult and you may not want to risk your current position because, you know, two years ago, it was easy to say, screw you, I'm going to go and jump to another job. Now it's it's not as easy. Uh, and so you may have to do what it is, whatever it is you can do to, to survive. Um, but know that things will turn around and, uh, and then we will sort of be back in the position of, of having a bit more power. But um, in the meantime, <clears throat> do the best you can. Overestimate if you have, but protect your position. The company is not generally on your side. Uh, so you need to, to protect yourself. All right. Thanks for initiating the, the, the ranty discussion. Um, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Have a good new year. Um, next year, I think, will be better uh than the past you know the past year that's that's my prediction for the next year and uh i may have a stream later today but if not i will i will be streaming some some solo stuff tomorrow so um have a great rest of your day have a good new year's eve have a safe new year's eve uh and i will see you later and or next year take care everyone <laughs>